I can't be complacent performing in front of 60, 70, 90,000 people. That's a thrill yeah. every time. Because you're you know? just like, oh, no, no, they're not arenas. They're stadiums. The store. They're stadiums. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So even as you approach the stage, you hear that. Yeah. That that rumble of, yeah. of just humanity. Yep. And you get to go out and perform for that, and they're just screaming and just, oh, my God, it's addictive. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm sitting here with the lovely Victoria Theodore. Victoria has played with everyone from Stevie Wonder to Sting to B.B. King, Esperanza Spaulding, Tony Bennett. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so happy to have you. Pleasure to be here. How did you get the gig with Beyonce? Well, in February last year, I was preparing for the second leg of my house concert tour promoting my album. <laughs> Grateful. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was preparing to send out my email messages looking for people to host. When I received an email message from Robin DiMaggio, the amazing drummer who mm -hmm. was our music director on the Arsenal Hall show. Which you were also Which on. I was also on. I was the pianist, keyboardist, and background singer for that. And Robin informed me of a Facebook posting that said, major artist seeking female keyboard player, and gave all this criterion that you were supposed to submit in a video. Okay. So it included things like playing scales at 120 beats per minute. Interesting. Major and minor, so I guess just to rule out, you know, technique. Right. Um, your favorite R&B tune, your favorite funk tune, a jazz tune, you know, various things, right? Like a, a list of things. But your choice of songs, so is a little bit of a taste quiz as well? I suppose so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And um, so I looked at the list and I just thought, hmm. This sounds like me. <laughs> because it just had such a variety, it included classical. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm a classically trained pianist, so it made sense. So I made a video, chose some songs, submitted the video, but it didn't say who the artist was, so I had no idea. And, you know, I'm in Hollywood, so Could be I get requests yeah. for things all the time. So I submitted it and forgot about it. it was whatever. About a week goes by, and I got a phone call saying, hey, we need you to submit one more video. Still didn't say who it was, though. And so I thought, okay. And then I found out it was um, one plus one. So I played that. And of course, I'm a huge fangirl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I immediately knew who it was at that point. Right. And um, I also knew that every great keyboard player in the country or the world would be going out for it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I never worry that, about that sort of thing. I just do what I can do right. and my best and release it and what's supposed to be will be. Right? right, right. So after that submission, I sent that video in and a week goes by again. And I'm like, okay. At that point, I started getting a little freaked out about it right. because I knew who it was and right. I just like, just love her, you yeah. know? So, um, Shortly thereafter, I got another phone call saying, hey, we want you to come and audition in person. So I finally got the location and the time and went down to the studio and it was just me. Sat Good in, sign. Sat in with Good the band, sign. played with her and got a contract that night. Wow. So they were only filling that position. Yes. Yeah. And so. you're just like... I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Yeah. What an experience. Yeah. But you were already, I mean, you probably knew most of the catalog anyways, Honda's from being a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not like putting yourself in it. You know, like, I'd work out and to, you yeah, know, yeah, do my exactly. best imitation of the exactly. dance moves. <laughs> Are we doing Love on Top again? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so I can imagine she seems like an angel and an amazing person to work for. She's it's surreal in a way how amazing she is. You don't expect someone of that celebrity caliber mm -hmm. to be as gracious. That's my favorite word to use for her, gracious, because she really is. I've seen her working, because mm -hmm. you know, she's in control of that thing. It's just her vision and, and her manifestation of that vision, right? So she works with the directors and the lighting and the 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 set, the wardrobe, the music. So she's in all of it. I mean, she's really... Wow a full-on artist in yeah. that sense, you know, where it's, she's 
really an ownership of it. So whenever she's interacting with people, it's always please and thank you. Who does that, right? I mean, even people who aren't celebrities have yeah. a hard time being gracious. Yeah, yeah you know? totally. And so for her to have that level of consciousness of being yeah. gracious, it's a beautiful thing to see and really inspiring. You can tell when an artist has, when it's when it's actually her show and it's not just hiring a creative right. director and you're just fully going with that. I mean, but when you actually have the vision, she's clearly a visionary. Oh, and then make sure it's executed mm -hmm. and then make sure everyone's reward, like rewarded yeah. just with love, yeah. not just compensation, you know, like. Sure. That's amazing. Yeah. What would you say the best lesson you learned from her was? Ah, oh, the best lesson from Beyonce. Hmm. It would probably be maintaining the intention to pursue and achieve excellence mm. in everything, because that's that's who she is. Everything she does as a singer, I mean, she's superlative, mm -hmm. right? Just she must have perfect pitch. I don't know for sure, but. I don't hear her hit a bad note. Perfect, yeah. I don't hear. I do not hear her hit a bad note. Yeah. It's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and her expression is just—it's beautiful. It's unique. And her yeah. dancing. Come on, she's like a professional dancer yeah. on top of being such an amazing singer. And her character with all of in all of the songs is full on. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's the song where she's been wronged, you feel that. Right. When it's the song that she's in love, you feel that. Right. right. So that's just you know because she has this dedication to excellence, and that wow, that um, intention feeds over to the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's just like you can tell how authentic it is coming out of her, and then to see her. I mean, as we all are fans, right? Yeah. But her constant yeah. growth. When she was already incredible. I know, right? <laughs> like, where do you go from here? And then you watch the Grammys this year, you're like, oh, you go there. <laughs> you go there. Wow. What? How do you even think of that? How right? do you even think of that? <laughs> I know. What would you say she is pickiest about in the live set? Perfection. It all has to be right, all of it, because she's so aware. Yeah. You know, she's aware of what's happening with the music and the groove of it. Mm -hmm. She's aware of the singers, she's aware of the dancers, she's aware of how the lighting is and all the explosions. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, right? right? It's just, it's a full on experience. Yeah. And so she's aware of that. And I, I know one thing, actually, one thing I can say too is that's something that I teach to my students, right? Because mm -hmm. I teach as well. Mm -hmm. I do workshops and all that thing. And I always talk to musicians and I tell them, you really have to think about the experience of the audience member, mm. right? Because you can be having a bad day, we all do. You can have a stomach ache, you can be tired, you can receive some bad news, whatever. That person in the audience paid good money to come and have an experience, mm -hmm. and it behooves us as entertainers right. to give them that. Right. And so she exemplifies that. When she puts on a show, I don't care if she's tired, sick, whatever. Oh, you're gonna remember that show. Yeah. <laughs> it's making it not about you and making it about yeah, them. Yeah, you know, so she's them, she's yeah. she's a real leader with that. Wow, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, so that's amazing. The opportunity, because I can I can speak as a woman in this right. business. There's right. not a lot of us, right. right, who are in the career on the mm -hmm. long term, right? right? Other than you know, like the leaders, you mm -hmm. know, the 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 main artists. You know, there's the support musicians. There's there's few, just right. a few of us. You know, as keyboard players, I can name you know Cassandra O'Neill. Lynette uh, Williams, um, Sandra Manning, that's some, just a couple of the, the women that I know right. who are support musicians. Right. And to be on a gig where all of the band, all the singers, all the dancers are all women, that's really powerful. If I'd like to rewind a little bit earlier in your career, mm. how did you get the Stevie Wonder gig? <laughs> okay, so. Which, by the way, come on, Victoria. Come on, right? Come on. What's <laughs> crazy? Just crazy. <laughs> So uh, back in 2007, um, there was this thing called MySpace. Oh, I remember this. Remember that? Dot com. <laughs> and I was very strategic with creating my profile. So I had really good pictures. I had, it was mainly classical piano okay. because I wanted to do wedding gigs. But I also reached out to everyone that I found in the trades was working as a support musician for mm. superstars. And consistently, if someone asked me, would you want to go on tour? My pat answer was only with a superstar. Ooh, sit in the bar there. Sit in the bar. Ooh, I like right? that. So I remember making friends with various people online and, um, or, you know, friends. Right. They didn't actually know me or I'd never met any Constantly of them. Constantly rotating your top eight. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I came out of yoga class one day and I had a text message that said, Stevie Wonder's looking for a keyboard player, call this number. And I thought, what? <laughs> so I called the number and it turned out to be legit. And next thing I knew, I got a call back saying, we need you in Los Angeles, come audition. Where were you? I was in the Bay Area. Oh, in Bay, right, the Bay. Right. I'm from the Bay Area, yeah, yeah. Oakland, what? <laughs> <All right. laughs> and um, so I immediately called on my piano students and said, eh, cancel for the day. Yeah. <laughs> and I flew to Los Angeles on a Friday, thinking I would audition for, you know, be there for an hour or two, do my little four minute audition and go back for a gig that night in San Francisco. Well, that's not the way it works with Stevie. I arrived at noon, had my audition at four with several other people in the room. Stevie came that night. We all played and we did, you know, with, before he got there, we did the, the, the hits. Uh -huh. Once he arrived, it was all about your ear. So he would play something you'd never heard before and then, okay, your turn, go play it. Whoa. You'd have to go play it, change keys, double time it, whatever you asked you to do. So right. just- He was so, calling the shots? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. He's, he's, he's in charge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it was his decision. Yeah. Right. So it was four days of that. Four days of a boot camp. Yes. Whoa, Stevie boot camp. Stevie boot camp. That's tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there were nine keyboard players all together going for two jobs. And on the fourth day, which was Monday, August the 13th, I was told I got hired. Whoa. First show, August 19th. Whoa. Headline said two hours, three hours. What is it? Oh, two and a half, three. Two. As the regular. And every show is different. Like if you go to a Stevie show, anybody who goes to a Stevie concert, you know this. Every show is different. Yeah. Because it's based on what he feels. What he's feeling in the moment, yeah. So that spontaneity is initially terrifying. Because yeah. <laughs> you're like, what's he going to do? What's right. the set list mean? And you with know. that big of a group, too, that's all going to follow. Amazing. Yeah. At that point, it was a 14-piece band. Now it's even bigger. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and so I just I did that um, for almost seven years. What was a big lesson from Stevie that you learned? To listen, because you don't know where he's going to go, mm -hmm. and he could throw it to you at any point. He's just so generous with that. Like wow. If you watch the Live at Last DVD, yeah. where you'll see me. Um, <laughs> he gives everyone a spotlight, everyone a chance to do a solo. I got plenty of camera time. You know, he says our names. It's a beautiful thing. It's amazing, thing. man. He yeah, shares the experience. Like, wow. Yeah, it's not just about him. It's about everything that's happening. Yeah, this, I've seen him play, too. He makes it about everyone in the audience as well. Everyone's yeah. participating. Exactly. He's getting the crowd to improvise right. with him. You know, I've been really, really... You can call it lucky, you could call it blessed, wherever you you are. But um, the people I've worked for, Beyonce's the same way. Every night at the end of the show, you know, she thanked the band and yeah. we get camera time and she interacts with the audience in the same way. And it's just, you know, to have people who are of that iconic stature right. be generous. It's just, it's beautiful. How was the experience of performing at Obama's second inauguration with Stevie Wonder? How cool was that? It was the coolest. The coolest. <laughs> the topper. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, how did it feel? It felt fantastic because I just, you know, I had such admiration for President Obama and Michelle Obama. Um, the Obamas. The Obamas. The whole family. And they love Stevie, so the fact that, that combination, what? Did, Absolutely. Could you incredible. see them in the audience when you were playing? Yeah. Were they just like... <laughs> they were grooving. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah. It was did you get to make eye contact with him or anything? I did. I didn't get to meet either of them, but at one point we were on the way to the stage. He was about 10 feet away from me, and I waved, <laughs> and he nodded and smiled at me. I was like, okay. It's like, blessed. Yes. <laughs> Take that and run. Thank you, sir. I did. <laughs> right to the stage. <laughs> yeah, I love watching that guy talk. You can watch him talk forever, just his smile and his face and his everything. So I can only imagine the overload of Stevie Wonder, which gives me the biggest smile ever. Ever. Mixed with Obama, which also gives me the biggest smile ever. It's like, and then you yeah, with that on. smile. I mean, it's just a smile <laughs> fest. Yay. <laughs> Do you have a philosophy in which you live by? Philosophy in which I live I by. I feel like you do. I do. I named my album Grateful because I do practice gratitude 
and choose to practice happiness as well. Mm. Because we all have challenges in life, right? Mm. We all have disappointments, um, but it's what we do with it. And part of my pursuing excellence in my life and being an example to others mm. is by meditating on gratitude, thinking about what I have to be grateful for. And I have a lot to be grateful for. And trying to keep that in mind as I go through life and the ups and downs. Um, but also to, I really do, I'm a teacher. And I know that I have a lot to offer. Mm. And I try to, through my life, through my living, be an example of graciousness, kindness, creativity, and limitlessness. That was beautiful, and it shows. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time and coming and doing this with us. We love you. We support Victoria. You're the best. Thank you, Elmo. Jump card out. out here.